So happy new year and welcome to 2024. So if you guys have been around for a while, thank you so much for the support the past year. And if you are new to the channel, welcome and happy new year to you. So as we bounce into the new year, many of us might be wondering whether we should start investing or we already have put money into some investments and are thinking about how we can better manage our money. So in the previous video that I've done, I've shared my portfolio and what other different stocks I'm holding. However, those stocks might not be the best tool or best investment for you because of how unstable the market can be and everything that happens on a day-to-day -day basis and the inability to keep up with trends because we all got a full-time job. Or I hope at least everybody has. You got another job? So then this leaves us with another option which is to put our money into fixed income assets. And as, as confusing as it can sound, fixed income asset is a pretty simple concept of putting your money into an asset class and it will pay you a fixed amount of interest over a period of time. So two of the most common ones here that we have is T-bills and SSB which we have covered in a previous video the differences that they have but if SSB isn't something you're looking out for because the rates might not be the highest then the next option to go for is fixed income assets like fixed deposits which is easily available for anyone with a bank account to subscribe to or even to sign on to and get started with it and by the end of this video you should be able to have some idea of whether T-bills or maybe fixed deposits is something more suitable for you. And if you're new to the channel and have no idea what T-bills are, they are basically Singapore government securities which is issued at a discount to you so you, as the buyer, can get some discount from the purchase. And I know that you love discounts. So this discount that you get is counted as a yield that you receive. So for example, if you apply for $1,000 of T-bills at the end of the auction, when it's announced that the discount rate is at 4% per annum and since T-bills is a 6 months maturity period the calculation for the discounts will be as follows so we got $1,000 minus $1,000 times 4% divided by 2 which will give you $980 so the platform that you apply for T-bills which is usually the bank will refund you $20 today and at the end of 6 months they will return you the principal sum of $1,000 giving you a yield of $20. So that's the very simple concept of how you can get fixed income from T-bills. And in Singapore, T-bills are released every two weeks, which means that you can consistently bid for T-bills and in a way, cycle your money every six months to earn the yield or the discount. Where'd all that come from? The sky, the rain money. So with T-bills, you're essentially lending money to the government, which is then used to build infrastructures like roads, um, repair things in the country and in return the government gives you a discount or interest from lending them your money but on the other side we have fixed deposits so fixed deposits are a little easier to understand because it has been a tool that your parents or even my parents have been using for the longest time and with the current increased interest rates this means that the cost of borrowing money from the bank is higher but the interest rate that you're getting from lending your money out to the bank is also higher so similar to T-bills, a fixed deposit is also a loan of your money to someone but in this case, you're lending your money to the bank and the bank can then loan this money out to someone else who needs or wants to get a loan. So between you, the bank and the borrower, there are some interest along the way. So the borrower might be paying an effective interest rate or EIR of 7.56% and then the bank pays you 3.2% for lending out your money for 12 months. So this nets the bank 4.4%, which is how they are earning from loaning money out. And definitely this example is an oversimplification of how it works, but it's a rough idea of how money moves around this space. So T-bills and fixed deposits can be very similar in some ways, with just at the end borrower being a different person. But there are some differences that will determine whether you should invest in T-bills or whether you should just dump money into fixed deposits. So the first difference here is the interest rate. So if you look across the board for the interest rate for fixed deposits, this range between 3.10% to 3.68%. And for the lower end of the interest rates, you need to put at least $10,000 for a period of 3 to 12 months with UOB for example, and the higher end of the spectrum at 3.6% to 3.68%, you're looking to put $20,000 for 6 to 12 months with a bank like RHB. 
but across the board, the average interest rate you can look to get is about 3.35% with the requirement of $500 being the minimum deposit and a 3 months tenure. So T-bills on the other hand have a much higher interest rate, but this comes with some risk involved that we'll talk a little bit more later. So if you look at the historical interest rates for T-bills, you can see that the interest rate floats between 3.71% to 3.96% in the last year. So this means you get at least 10% more interest with T-bills as compared to fixed deposits. So this difference of 10% could mean a difference between $10 to $100 depending on the capital that you have in each of these instruments. So the next difference here is liquidity. So when we talk about liquidity, it's usually referred to how much liquid cash you have. Or in other words, is how easily you can take money out of whichever investment tools that you're using. So if you have high liquidity, this means that you can easily pour your money if you ever need cash for emergencies. And with low liquidity, it means it takes a longer period of time to get those money out. So for T-bills and fixed deposits, they got very different liquidity. So fixed deposits tend to be a little bit more liquid as compared to T-bills because you can request to get your money out from the fixed deposits at any point of time. So let's say you have a six months tenure, but at month three, you really need some money, you can request to have your money taken out. However, this might incur some admin fees or might even mean that you lose your interest. So if you're looking to go for the fixed deposit route, do check in with the bank that you're applying for to see the terms and conditions to make sure that they are within your favor. Let the odds be ever in your favor. So TBS on the other hand, they have zero liquidity. It means nothing, zero, zip. So once you bid for T-bills, you cannot have access to that money for a period of six months. So this means that even if there's an emergency, you will have no way to get access to whatever amount that you have invested. So this could be a crucial factor when deciding between T-bills and fixed deposits. Next, we're gonna talk about risk appetite. So in most countries, we have something called SDIC, which is the Singapore Deposit Insurance Corporation. And in the US, it's called FDIC, but Essentially, it's just an insurance coverage for the deposits that you have with the bank. So for fixed deposits, you are covered up to 75,000 of deposits. So in the event the bank falls or the bank topples or black swan event happens, you receive your deposits up to $75,000. But when we look at T-bills, the coverage is a little bit different. For the case of T-bills, your principal and interest is guaranteed by the Singapore government, which kind of means that as long as the balance sheet of the government is good, we are probably in a safe zone, which I think the Singapore government is doing a pretty stable job right now. So lastly, the most important thing that we gotta cover is the investment capital. So some of you might be new and looking to start, or some might have some package lying around, just figuring out what to do with that. So between T-bills and fixed deposits, T-bills do carry a lower investment at $1,000 and you can only invest in multiples of thousands. So fixed deposits on the other hand usually requires a couple of thousand dollars to even qualify for a decent interest rate. With the exception of ICBC, which can give a 3.35% with a minimum of $500 deposited into the bank. So now the big question that you have is which one is for you? So if you are maybe a student just starting out investing, T-bills will be something to go for. And by taking on a very small risk, you can get 10% more yield as compared to a fixed deposit which requires higher capital investment. But if you're a young working adult like me, I will go for a dual kind of approach where I set some money for T-bills and use a shorter term fixed deposit like a one to three months to store my emergency funds, allowing it to grow faster. So this brings us to the end of today's video. First one for 2024. If you can help me by just dropping a like, subscribe and stay notified if you aren't already, it will help a lot. And if you're looking to invest, this is the sign for you to start investing. Take it as a sign and I'll see you guys in the next one.